get right to it. I, I sense that there are some questions from the audience eventually, so uh, I'm, I'm going to but I'm going to begin with Ed, who did this uh, empirical study, which is of interest. And uh, can you just uh, briefly explain what you did and the findings? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> the paper is published by the Stanford Technology Law Reviews. And uh, uh, it was mentioned uh, earlier, and it's on the IPAS website, apparently, a link to it. Uh, I took a look at the media's use of the term patent troll, as well as variants of the entity, either uh, patent assertion entity, patent monetization entity, et cetera, uh, patent holding company as well, over a 20-year period looking at some of the top newspapers in the United States in the top 25 by circulation. Uh, just a couple quick uh, findings from that survey that I think are informative. Uh, the first is, and I know uh, that Several people have already mentioned the eBay case as being a watershed moment. Uh, I believe that year, 2006, was a watershed moment for the media's use of the term patent troll, because that's the year in which uh, the term patent troll became popular and the main term to refer to this sort of entity versus patent holding company. Before it was patent holding company. 2006, what happened? Besides the eBay case, uh, NTP, the BlackBerry settlement, occurred with over a half a billion dollar settlement, which was widely reported in the press. So part of the narrative following those two cases uh, was the more negative portrayal of the entity as a troll, so to speak. Uh, so that's one major finding. The, the other uh, finding from this survey is that, and maybe this is not uh, news to you, uh, more often than not, the media use patent troll in a purely negative article uh, with no response explanation offered by the other side or attempt to get an explanation from an entity that is a patent monetization entity or patent assertion entity. And that was by a factor of two. So there were twice as many articles that had a purely negative portrayal of the issue uh, then there were articles that had both a negative and positive portrayal of the issue. Okay. And um, now that did, to be fair, that did include like op-ed. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. And I, I factor those out in, a, in a, one of the separate uh, figures in, in, the, in the article. Okay. Um, do any of the other panelists have any reaction to those findings? Um, I'm surprised. Uh, we, I'd note that uh, we used it most often in connection with two people in Chicago who were very, very proud to be called the first pet, to be called patent trolls. Uh, came up in the Intel case, but it gets it gets thrown around a lot. I guess uh, seeing it less now. I mean, this won't satisfy anybody. I'll call on you in a moment. Uh, 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 well, I'll call on you right now. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, he claimed. yeah, there's sort of a dispute between two Intel people. Yeah, two, there are two, I mean, there, he, he says that it was a less pejorative term uh, than patent extortionist, <laughs> which uh, became the basis for a defamation lawsuit, so that he needed a different term to characterize uh, an entity that was suing other entities like Intel. Uh, but apparently there was another Intel employee who also claims to have come up with the term as well. And uh, there's actually a video on YouTube that predates both of them that somebody used the term patent troll. So uh, it's a disputed origin of who came up with it. But, uh, I mean, uh, this won't satisfy anybody, but the problem that we have as practicing journalists, it's sort of obvious. Uh, you know, a lot of these articles are supposed to be like, 600 words long and if it's in hard copy that's hard and even if it's even if it's online a lot of editors want to keep them short and sweet and uh, um, and you've got and if it's the headline what uh, what are the alternatives and and for many like the, I think the New York Times you're supposed to write for like assuming an eighth grade level of education so what term do you use patent holding company means nothing 
to almost anybody. Patent, uh, 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 the NPE, non-practicing entity, nobody knows what practicing means in this context. Entity sounds juridical and legalese. And then if you use NPE, it becomes, uh, you've got NPE and PTO and IPR and it's alphabet suit and the editor won't permit it. So there's a lot of problems. And the easiest thing to do is to say, especially if it's headline, you gotta put it in quotes and say, you know, so-called or patent troll, blah, 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 and then you, then you explain it in the interior as best you can, saying that's a pejorative term for whatever it is. But uh, there's no better term. I, I uh, uh, patent holding company, I used to get criticism for that as, as being a, a pejorative, but, uh, I, I, you know, that's the, the best I can do. Can I just respond to John's point earlier? Uh, just one quick point. Uh, so if you disaggregate and look at the particular newspapers, uh, I'd have to say the Wall Street Journal and the LA Times, it, it was more balanced uh, in terms of uh, the number of articles that were sort of purely negative and the number of articles that had both more, a bit more balanced per portrayal of the entity. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, your publication, I didn't look at your publication, but it would fall under the same. Well, uh, I want to chime in on two uh, areas here. First, um, <coughs> Uh, media has been made a bad word by our president. When our president says the media has, says false things, he, they, he's, he's not talking about uh, Fox News, he's not talking about Clear Channel, he's not talking about Sinclair. These, most of the people in the country get their news from those, one of those three outlets, and he, had, he puts the media as um, the entire problem. Uh, I, I would hope that people don't think that just because I am a reporter, that I am necessarily uh, along the, uh, with the same uh, uh, problem as uh, has been said about the New York Times and the, and the Wall Street Journal and, frankly, the Washington Post. I'm not allowed to use patent trolls in my stories unless I, it's a quote from somebody else, and I better have a countervailing quote to that as well. To be honest, I'm not allowed to use death squads either from the other side and with the, for the same reason. Um, they don't, they're not helpful. But I can understand completely how it got out for what Roger said, how this is more prevalent. And I, I came with props. This, this is what people used to read when, of the stuff I wrote 10 years ago when I first got into this business. This is how they read what I write right now. And I used to be able to write 1,500 to 2,000 word stories about Federal Circuit opinions on here. I can't. I have to get it down to 500 to 700 words here. I used to have two lines of um, headlines here that only were constrained by the print type. I could have to get it down to 65 characters in here. And I have to be now be judged on the hits. I don't get a lot of hits with, Nash, with uh, a patent assertion entity in the title. <laughs> <coughs> so we are constrained by the way people consume news right now. And the other thing I just wanted to add in, which is sort of off topic, but I'll add it in anyway, is that the people who are most used to using this to access news are the people that we all think are stealing copyright. They, are n they're, they came from a culture of believing that things are free, and so when they see a, a, a title that looks like somebody who owns property, uh, intellectual property, is being labeled a bad guy, that might be something to click on. Uh, it's a, it's a self-defeating um, uh, world right now of, de uh, of s delivering news, and I don't know of a way to fix it because I'm still judged on hits. Yeah, and can, can I? Uh, sure. And I, I, I think this fits with what we're supposed to be talking about, and, and if, it, if it doesn't, it certainly fits with what some of the questions that were raised earlier today. Um, so let me give you a uh, pick up on what something Roger was saying about the, the target audience and, you know, and so forth. <coughs> IP Watchdog is obviously an online publication and only an online publication. Every article we publish, we have, you know, SEO, search engine optimization, and we go through this, and I do it, I do it all, you know, because I haven't been able to find anybody else who knows more about it for our industry that I can turn it over to, and it matters so much for whether people actually come and read it, is whether the search engines are optimized, each article is optimized 
to be found. Um, absolutely none of the articles that we publish is optimized for readability. Because, and we get a failing grade on every article we publish because on the internet you're supposed to publish articles for readability at a third grade level. And if it's not at a third grade level, then it is not maximized and optimized at the highest level for the search engine. Um, and if you have more than 10 words in a sentence, then you get penalized for that. If you have more than four sentences in a paragraph, you get penalized for that. So a lot of these things, you know, and, and th this is the reality of what's going on on the internet. And something that Tony was talking about, it was 65 characters. The titles for what the viewable space in Google, I think it's 60 to 65 characters is what a title will appear. So when you see a title that's long and descriptive and you might get it like in an email newsletter to see, you know, I really want to read that and it, the title tells you a lot about it. You go and you search for that article online, most of that title is gone. So in order for us to put a title in to attract you to the article, and know for the people who are actually going to search it, who is mo or most of the people that are going to read it are going to find it on Google. Bing and Yahoo are irrelevant, at least for, my, for what IP Watchdog they are. Um, it's the first 60 characters is all I got. And then I got another about, uh, I forget how many other characters there are in the, in the subtitle. But you know, all this is optimized. So you got to optimize this and use all these different buzzwords. Mm -hmm. So this is what is the dumbing down. And now this goes back to something that we talked about in our breakout session and something that we, I think, at these conferences have, have talked about. The other side with patent troll, it is a bumper sticker. We don't even have an elevator speech ourselves, let alone a bumper sticker. Okay, and so this is one of the reasons why <coughs> the pro-patent community is getting our butts kicked. Let me uh, ask one last question sort of about your study. And this is sort of on a bigger level. Uh, obviously, I don't think there's any excuse for a news story to present only a negative perspective on NPEs or whatever they're going to be called. But you were looking at a, your study is performed over a period when every branch of government is coming to the conclusion that there's an imbalance that there are too many low quality patents and there is some sort of uh, NPE problem. You know, the House, the Senate, the White House, the, the Supreme Court. And are, is the claim that, I mean, it's not just the media causing everything, it's, it's the media reporting on what's going on. This is the predominant sentiment across the country. Is that a defense? Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, the FTC came out with a report, the White House came out with a report uh, about bad patents and concern about litigation uh, by mm -hmm. uh, non-practicing entities. Uh, at the same time, in at least some of the government report, like the GEA report, uh, the GEA, uh, GAO, excuse me, yeah, GAO. Uh, called into question uh, some of the studies conducted by professors. Uh, you know how many uh, newspapers reported the GAO study? Uh, I mean, practically none. There was one or two. Whereas the professor's study that was mm -hmm. widely cited uh, by uh, newspapers, uh, because it fit better the narrative about bad patents being granted and all the litigation that had been caused by NPEs. So uh, my point is not to defend uh, the NPE or NPE litigation. Uh, my uh, point of at least the survey is to see how the issue was reported. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it seemed like uh, the predominant way of reporting the issue <coughs> was pretty one-sided. And it, to the extent that it even ignored uh, sort of contrary uh, information or uh, analysis by the GAO, which I, I thought was emblematic of the larger portrayal of the issue. Um, Tony, uh, how have you seen IP coverage change over the past 10 years? Well, <coughs> the other major change besides the presentation is that valuation became much more important. Um, 
10 years ago, I could write a story about a Federal Circuit opinion where I didn't even mention the companies involved in the first three paragraphs. Um, it would be very important to note that a specific decision would have impact over a broad range of industries or uh, would cause uh, attorneys to f argue differently. Um, now I have to, ha if frankly Google, uh, Intel, Apple, Microsoft, any of the pharmaceutical companies, if they're involved in the case, they're in the headline, they're in the first uh, paragraph, and I have to put, tell you which one won and which one lost. Um, <clears throat> I am in a specific situation in that, uh, compared to 10 years ago, Bloomberg bought my company. <laughs> and Bloomberg cares, I don't know if you know what Bloomberg made most of its money out of, it's not news, it's delivering information to these terminals on Wall Street uh, so that they can invest. I have to write so that if my information pops up on their terminal, they will know whether to buy a stock or sell a stock, um, or buy an industry fund or not. Uh, so that's been the most significant change in the last 10 years is uh, for me and I think for uh, reporters in general is it really matters who the parties are as opposed to what the legal uh, outcome was. And there's no party that's better than Apple because that, that gets more clicks than anything <laughs> yeah. between the investors and the uh, uh, fanboys and everything else. Uh, Gene, what changes have you seen in the past 10 years, in, say, in news coverage? Or well, I mean, and, and maybe this has always been the case to some extent, but it certainly <coughs> is, you know, it, it definitely noticeable. Is people really only read the headlines. People maybe read the first paragraph, you know, and, and um, then, but it doesn't stop them from going down to the comment section or going and e emailing you about what you got wrong and what you didn't know and, and all this other stuff. And it's like you're, you're complaining about something that you agree with me if you had just actually read the article. You know, and so it's um, I, I, maybe that has always been the case to some extent, but I think we have accelerated the, the need for speed to a, to a ridiculous level you know we we're not just living in a soundbite world i don't know even know how you would describe it i mean do you, do you see that tony oh uh I, I was had another example in uh 10 years ago nine years ago the federal circuit put out at 150 pages on in on in red in ray bilski was six or seven different opinions uh i got 4400 words which was something like eight pages to write about that and i could do it over the course of two days because it wasn't being consumed uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, the Federal On Bank Federal Circuit put out 150 pages on aqua products. Uh, my colleague got 900 words, um, and it had to be. It had to, he had to have a breaker by 11 in the morning on exactly what uh, the, the court had said in 150 pages worth of stuff to digest. And by the end of the day, he could write 900 words about it. Mm. Y you don't get anybody to read it the next day. Uh, John just. Well, I mean, you know, keeping with the theme that, or Bruce, for you, I think you wanted, you know, action items for people who are here and things that they, everybody needs to hear. One of the things that I always tell people, and this came up during our breakout session, you know, is a pejorative that reporters are lazy. And, you know, maybe some reporters are lazy. I, I, the way I say it is, assume reporters are lazy, right? Because if you do that, then you're going to do your job way better. <laughs> Because what I get a lot of times is people send me stuff and say, it would be really wonderful if you would write about X, Y, and Z. You know, it's really exciting. And I say, okay, great. Um, where can I get some, you know, information on this? Because obviously you know about this and I'm not yet up to speed on this. And it's like, oh, uh, you have PACER. You can go and all the documents are right there. And it's like, are you kidding me? You, the litigation you said has been going on for four years. You want me to go through PACER and find all the relevant documents that you obviously know which ones are relevant them to me you know or I can't tell you how frustrating it is to get a really interesting press release about something really exciting that's going on and uh, interesting technology an interesting event or interesting study results or something like that 
and it's relating to patents, and you don't put the patent number or any patent number at all in the press release. Well, why are you wasting your money on a press release then? You know, I mean, there's like little or no information that's being provided. And then by the time I can get, sometimes people will say, I'm not going to give you the information, you know. And, um, and a lot of times by the time I get the information, you know, you, it's, you're past the cycle, you know, like you were just saying, you know, and it, nobody's going to read about that tomorrow. You know why? Because that press release has been picked up everywhere on the Internet, you know, it just automatically. So for me to actually take time to try and write a thoughtful piece that maybe a few people are going to read is, is not where it's going to be a, 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 the best bang from, for my buck, you know. So I think what you have to do is think about how do you make your news interesting and not only interesting but consumable by the reporter, right? Because you want the reporter, whoever you're giving it to, to be sort of a champion and maybe not to like wave your flag and be your PR, but to be interested enough to write about it. Uh, one, b before I open it up to the floor, I just want to ask uh, John, because uh, you have sort of a different, uh, tell people what, how you use uh, IP in your uh, daily work. We have, so we use it a little bit differently in terms of not covering the day-to-day, the -day, um, you know, uh, courtroom battles of, over the IP. Uh, occasionally, if somebody really big here, uh, you know, gets involved in, in patent litigation, we'll jump in. But a lot of what we've done the last few years is we started looking at patents as basically the shortcut to find innovative companies in, in Chicago that we just aren't writing about. And we found some great companies uh, by doing that. Uh, there's a firm here in town that helps helps us sort of crunch that and come up with great companies uh, called Ocean Tomo. They do patent valuation for a living. But we've we've come up with some really, really interesting stories about companies that otherwise don't get covered, companies that uh, readers have never heard of. And it's just, you know, it's from that standpoint, um, it's, it's a great window onto innovation. Mm -hmm. Well, let me open it up to the floor. What, what questions would you like to ask the media? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I was pointing, a, yeah, to that fellow, I'll get you next. This came up in our breakout session. Uh, litigation is a fraction of a fraction of what goes on in patents in any given year. It's so over a million assignments. And I don't see, aside from a few headline grabbing ones like Microsoft, AOL, and other things like that, of any of those deals ever elevating. So my question to the media is, what are you doing to actually track what is really the majority of the transfer of IP that's going on around the country that is uh, outside of litigation because it's, it's that's an easy easy answer absolutely nothing <laughs> and the reason is is um you can't right no 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 and i would love to cover that but you know you get like a, a press release that gets issued and trying to find any information other than what's in the press release is in my experience impossible you know including can you just Give me, and I'm talking about friendly companies, you know, companies that, you know, like pro-patent companies, you know, can you give me, you, you say you, you license like this entire portfolio or you sign this entire portfolio, can you give me like a couple patents in here that would be uh, examples of the technology included? No, it's a confidential agreement. Well, then why did you issue a press release? We all know why that is, because they want their names out there in the public. And, and it's, but like, for me, that's not a news. That's not a news story. That's. I mean, for me to pass on because for I, I don't want to just pass along gossip, you know. And and also, the other thing is if everybody else is going to pass it along, like every other website that is just going to republish PRN wire or business wire, then that's not something that I'm particularly interested in because and then I'm competing with them. And maybe this is a good good lesson. I mean, if you probably feel the same way, right, Tony? You know, I want to publish original stuff. Tony writes original stuff. He wants to publish original stuff. So if we're just going to be competing with a press release on all these press release sites, then you're asking us to take time and energy from our business to then maybe be on the third or fourth page of Google. You know, so we need to get some juice to it in order to make it real. Actually, speaks to some things we talked about earlier today. The repurposing, I think, of a, of a company that was changing track. So in my mind, it was like, wow, that's pretty creative. That's newsworthy, captures imagination. 
And some of that's discoverable. You might not know the amount, but you yeah. certainly know the art areas and other things like that. Yeah, I, I, over time, I've just given up asking yeah. for information. I, I work for the Bloomberg Law side of Bloomberg, and my colleague works for the Bloomberg News side. We both get the same PR re release. And the Bloomberg News people will dutifully send what they call first word to all of the people on those terminals at Wall Street, telling them what happened that they can glean from that um, or press release. And if I can't go beyond their first word, which is about a paragraph, maybe two sometimes, I don't have anything else I can write about. Right. Yeah, and that's the and that's sort of you know, and we talked about this again during during our. Breakout group. Like I give you another. For instance, I know, and you know, in this room, there are situations where uh, IPR has been filed, and the, the 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 patent owner has has won at the petition stage. Then a very similar, or nearly identical IPR has been filed again, and again, and again, because there's no estoppel, right? And I know that happens. You know that happens. And I even know some of the companies that's happened to. And I'm asking, can you give me a number? Tell me, look at this number, right? Because the PTO doesn't have the easiest system to find these types of things on, right? And the response I get is, well, I'd really rather you not write about us. I'd rather you write about somebody else. Okay, well, fine. Well, then I, how am I going to go and find that needle in that particular haystack? But now what then happens is, and I don't know whether anybody here from Unified is here, and I mean, you probably, I disagree with them on practically everything, um, and that's common knowledge. But then I see people in Unified come up, and they'll say things like, well, there's just no credible evidence that that's ever happened. And I know it's happened. But then the problem is, they, they say, well, prove it. Well, now I've got to then throw somebody under the bus who's asked me not to say that it's happened to us. Or then they make me look like I'm the imbecile, you know. And it's so I. If you want help getting your stories out, fine. But then help. <laughs> Bob, you had had a question. Uh, somebody else had the same thing, but why can't you use the phrase "patent owner" in these headlines? And isn't journalism, at least as it's practiced in the Times and the Journal, supposed to be objective? And the term troll has all kinds of pejorative connotations. That's why the bad guys use it. Um, if you put educated. it in quotation marks and explain what it means, you know, because people know what a patent troll means. Patent owner isn't what it's about. If the story is about NPEs, an NPE and a patent owner are not identical. You need to tell the reader what the story is about. But, but aren't you misleading? I mean, Bob's point is the public has certain preconceptions about what a patent troll is. And Bob's point is if you use that terminology, in and quotes, the reasons you're saying, in quotes, but the, but the public doesn't get that. I mean, the, the you reader doesn't. You explain it that. within. You say this but, is a pejorative term for blah, blah, blah. But as soon as, as, soon as people read the, wor the word. It's like the daily news. Yeah, I, mean, I think this is, you know, I, the, the notion that. This is why, over 10 years, you know, every uh, branch of government thought there was an imbalance seems wrong to me. That's unconvincing to me. I think, I think uh, you know, uh, I, I think you're grasping at straws. And this guy, like you said, Nero, he used to enjoy uh, bragging about it. You know, you use the word, you know, we all use the word piracy. That's not a very nice word, you know, and, but look, Larry Lessig has won despite us, you know. They got past that. They got past piracy. They got past stealing because for various reasons. I don't think the word patent troll is, is the source of your problems. See, now, I, I do disagree with that, I mean, personally, but, I mean, the, the, the problem with patent troll is it's become synonymous with patent owner, I think. And I don't know what we do about that. You know, and I, I don't know that at this point, and, and maybe I should get this out here now before we run out of time, because at some point in time, if, if, if money is not spent on the, the patent owner community side, then we're just wasting our time. You know, because um, the other side is well-funded, well-organized, 
and they know what they're doing. They have PR people, they have lobbyists, and they're winning hearts and minds. And we are fighting an uphill battle. To me. And I say we because I assume everybody here knows that I publish a pro patent publication. <laughs> I think so. To me, yeah. <laughs> my takeaway so far from this session is that we've got to do something to get a more objective, or sympathetic, or whatever word you want to use, quality of reporting of our side of the story in the media. And unless we can do that, I think we're lost. I think the media affects Congress to some extent. Lobbyists and money do too, too. Um, and the media affects judges to, I think, a more significant and so my question to you is, forget about nomenclature. What can we do to get a more objective result from the media? Well, I think that's a, a good question. Uh, the, um, and in fact, you know, I, had, I was trying to invite some people to come on this panel, and a lot of people turned me down, reporters, you know, uh, and because uh, the, the group is perceived as, uh, you know, not down the middle. And, uh, uh, and then you do have, uh, frankly, well, you know, there are organizations that are very close to the tech industry, like Ars Technica. And, and uh, we, uh, Fortune absorbed a group called GigaOM. And I could see there was a big cultural difference <laughs> between uh, those reporters and us. Nice people, but a uh, very big cultural difference. But I think what might help is, I, I don't know if it's feasible, but you know, if you could have a conference <coughs> that incorporates your side and the other side. But the so other that side never does that. They, they never have well, our side. Uh, you know, and that's the problem. I mean, you don't I don't know if somebody could invite because you know, oh. when you say invite somebody, well, see the, see the problem I have. You know, like we say, you've invited other media people and they didn't come here because we are all on one side. You know, the the problem is the media is all on the other side. We are the only. We are probably the only people in the. You know, maybe, maybe we could probably fill this floor and that floor with people on our side and everybody else is on the other side you know and well, it's that's so, what i'm saying so if you can get see and they somebody think said we outnumber them how is that possible you said uh, somebody <laughs> early on somebody <laughs> mentioned that this was you know preaching to the choir and that is the problem you need to get a forum where you know uh, you know you're, where Mr. Teese is talking and Marshall Phelps is talking, and, but Mark Lemley is also talking. And then you can get a group of journalists in that will hear both sides and, they, and perhaps they will hear, you know, there is another side to this. But uh, I think that's the way to do it. Um, yeah, the funny thing is, is though, if Mark Lemley's on the panel, they'll show up, even if the panel is completely and totally slanted. And, and you know, and th but that is the reality where we're, we're facing. And it's, and so I guess I'm, I'm just Eeyore here right now, you know, with, and I don't know what the answer to that is, you know. Can I uh, just mention one thing in response to Bob's question? Um, I, I think it's a really difficult question <coughs> and about, you know, how is the media going to improve the coverage of the patent trolls or whatever the IP issue is. Uh, the same sort of problem exists on a, on a sort of different plane in, the, in academia in terms of scholarship that's seen either as pro-patent or anti-patent. And uh, you know, I think part of the solution is, is you know, holding people to back up their claims with sort of empirical studies that validate whatever their claims are. And I think the jury may still be out as far as the negative effects of uh, the NPE litigation. Uh, and there's still uh, you know, studies being done. Uh, but I think that's one sort of antidote that you, know, you get some data or evidence to back your, your view up. Uh, I think, I'm, I'm not actually a patent professor, so I, I could be claimed to be sort of in the middle. 
Uh, but in the patent realm, I think it is fairly divided. You, you are either sort of on this side or that side, and uh, you're, you're kind of known in either camp, uh, much more so than uh, I, I think would be healthy to have a uh, sort of uh, open scholarly inquiry into the potential harms or benefits of uh, non-practicing entities. Well, but that, that is true, but when we, there was that open inquiry by the FTC, they came and said that the use of the term patent troll was unhelpful and biased. Yes, exactly. But yet, the media continues to use it. Well, there aren't, yeah. I mean, you know, we can all pick our favorite, uh, our, our favorite white paper or, you know, uh, what you need is a forum where the Lemleys of the world can talk to your people and, and then you know, each side will have their studies. I'm sorry, you, uh, you had a question. As I listen to this discussion, I, I actually look at our representative from the, a non-aligned organization. Really, uh, Crane Chicago Business is not, not one side or the other. And maybe it would be helpful, John, if you would talk a little bit about your coverage of the topic of intellectual property and how that's received, since you're, you're not perceived to be an advocate for intellectual property one way or the other, but, but I think what might be interesting for the group is how that is received in the general sense of the populace that read your paper. Yeah, I'm not covering for the, for the legal industry. It's one of you know, 20 industries that read us. I'm just looking for a good story. And the, the, the patents uh, help us get there in a lot of ways. So, you know, we've written about um, the patent trolls, um, you know, the guys who are quite proud of it. We've also written a couple of stories about, uh, about NPAs who have, you know, they've acquired some kind of intellectual property. And then the question becomes, so what, you know, what's at stake? Who's, um, you know, who's going to get hurt, helped, whatever? But what seems to me that the, the challenge I've come up, I, I've, I've sort of run into as a reporter writing about these uh, cases is that you've got to be willing to tell your story. You know, who's your, who's your client? What's at stake? What did you purchase? Why, you know, wh why, why do you have, um, uh, why is there an interest in, in, in pursuing the litigation? It, you know, nine times out of 10, the, um, uh, the defendants have been, you know, very willing to talk about, hey, this is, you know, this is what this is doing. This is how I get impacted. But very, uh, it, it's been very infrequent that the NPE has been willing to talk at all. And that's sort of the problem is I, I can't write what I don't know. But in terms of just you know, general, the, the, with, with covering patents, one of the more interesting things that, that we've found is uh, entities that uh, have basically owe their, live, their, their survival to having a good IP portfolio and being able to defend it. The, you know, the, the thing about um, the patents is we've gotten a lot of interest in response. This, uh, this, this list that I, that I told you we've done, we've done like five years now. And you get a lot of investors, a lot of inventors, and just a lot of people in the business community are very interested in innovation. And they've sort of looked at patents as a way to shine the light on the innovation. That's what they cared about. They didn't care at all about the patents. And, and to some extent, that's, that's not what we're focused on. We're trying to focus on the innovation behind it. And that leads, you to, um, that leads you to the thing that people can identify with, that readers can identify with. It also leads you to the who. Uh, and if you can sort of get that out there, then, then you really broaden the audience. Can I just add one nugget from my study that sort of correlates to that? One common theme in the portrayal was that uh, these patent entities were not contributing to innovation because they're not right. manufacturing anything. That was you know, repeated often in the portrayal of uh, this issue. And I would just like to say I'm not aligned either. Um, and we've done reports that basically tell Acacia's side of the story, tell shipping and transit side of the story, tell Judge uh, Gilstrap's uh, reasons for believing uh, every case should have gone to Eastern District of Texas. But I've done them on the other side too. Uh, there are st we, we we are looking for stories, and uh, they can come from either side, and I don't care. Um, if 
they uh, will appeal to particular constituencies. Great. Now, I guess I'm a shill, and the people who, <laughs> the people who only write pro infringer stuff, they're just telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. So, so, the, so the key issue here is that no infringer ever wants to pay and that everything is evil and bad if they have to pay. So the name troll doesn't matter. Uh, when, I, when I was the Hewlett Packard, I would tell the board of directors, I said, I have the toughest job of anybody in HP because uh, people don't want to pay me money because for things that they're already doing for free. Um, and um, so call it what you want. The fact is, all these infringers don't want to pay, and they'll want to hate whatever they hate, uh, do. Um, and then having like Obama out there and, and, and showing a troll, the President of the United States calling a troll, what the hell is that about? So, I mean, no matter what, all these people are going to be viewed as bad things. Um, and, and Gene, I think your job is really hard because uh, no one, you don't want to say anything to anybody if, you're, if you pay. Um, no, I and, know. I and mean. and, 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 and uh, that, that's just endemic. And so all these names are just names. The fact is, all the infringers don't want to pay. That's the bottom line of all this. And the question is, um, sometimes these infringers are as bad as extreme trolls because they, they don't pay fairly. They ought to be paying a fair value for their um, in inventions. And that, that's the endemic issue that we have right here. Yeah. So. Do, do we have one, time for one more? Because uh, Russ has had his hand up for a bit. So I, pro-patent, anti-patent, to some extent it doesn't matter. What does matter is that the U.S. economy and competitiveness on a global scale has been negatively affected by the changes that have happened. So if we can continue to focus and try and find counter narratives to trolls, efficient infringers, inventors burning their patents on the, on the patent office steps, yeah, that'll get some clicks and move forward. But I think the bigger issue is what have we done to the country and our ability to compete and will those headlines make it in the... Well, that's a good headline, if, if, uh, and that's a good story, if you have the empirical evidence that, you know, can support it and, 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 and link it to... Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, t I'll, t I'll, I'll, t I'll yeah. tell you, Russ. The... Um, and I continue to try and write stuff like that. And, you know, I do it every so often. And I, w I wish I could do more of it. And um, I'll, I'll say it like this. I tell people all the time. The articles that I write that I am the most proud of, that I think have the most potential to influence, are the ones that are least read. Now, I think they're the ones that are read the most by the people who matter. You know, because I think, you know, like people like you see it and, you know, and people like Jim and others and Bruce, you know, they see it and they pass it around. And, I, you know, so that's why I keep writing that stuff. But when, you know, when you're looking for if you're trying and, and, you know, and I'm not trying to get a million hits and stuff like that. But, you know, that's one of the things that you, our the side getting that messages out are facing is those stories, in my experience, don't do nearly as well as, you know, Beyonce is getting opposed at the trademark office, you know, and, it, and it's a sad commentary on on society. But um, but and I'll, I keep writing. I know Tony keeps writing stuff like that when, whenever he has time too. Um, but and and I really do want to say, to just to show the media is not monolithic. Read the Financial Times st uh, uh, article from about two weeks ago. It's yeah. It, it's not a single thing out there that's the media. Yes, the New York Times is someone you would like to get into room with uh, competing sides and say this is really what's going on, but uh, it's, not, it's not everybody.
Tell me the error they made that you want me to correct. Well, I mean, I think m what Marshall was saying is you got to get to matter on the on the accounting side, on the number side, you know, and I don't know how you do that. You know, I mean, we got to have some conversations about that. Oh. Um, because if it matters to the board of directors, and it matters to the CEOs and the CFOs, then it'll matter to the people who are writing the, the, the business articles and so forth. Um, and you know, I'm happy to participate in that conversation, but I don't have the answer. I think it, it gets. Oh, it, you, you, I think it get, gets back to the point that, that I brought up earlier: is that you know you have to engage the the business press who doesn't write about this every day, and better at telling your story. 